way, I want to introduce my best friend, and uh, she is the partner that changed my life next to Jesus. It's this lady right here. Why don't you stand, Jan, and just, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I don't know how it is. I just got to digress for a moment. I know I got to move fast. But, 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 Pastor John, I don't know what it is about us. Us ugly guys get such good-looking wives. <laughs> Amen? 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 Okay, you're a little weak on there. Let's get her out together. Tell the person next to you, maybe you'll get good, better looking after the service or something like that. But uh, I, I feel... Uh, I feel such a sense, and I know I'm new to some of you, not all of you, and so sometimes when I come on like this, kind of real strong, that's just, just my personality, and, and, and go, who is this guy? But, but I have such a sense of the significance of, of not just this afternoon and what, what we did this morning with, with leaders, but, but, but what, what, what's about to happen in this house. Just, just prophesy this to somebody. You are at a very special place. Tell them that. Yeah, I, 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 and I don't, I don't just mean in terms of, of, of a building and a location, but God's plans and purposes for this house. There's a prophecy over Reclaim Church. There's a prophecy. You weren't just started because God wanted to keep you busy or he didn't have anything else to do. He's got plans, watch this, and he hasn't changed them. Amen? Just tell the person next to you, we've been getting ready. See, that's real critical you understand that. You've been doing a lot of good stuff, but that's just getting ready for what's about to happen. And so I have such a sense of the significance of what, what this afternoon and, and the season and what, what the Lord has spoken to Jan and I. See, we're not here to preach a sermon. Now, I've got a few of them, more than a handful of them, and uh, I, I have at least two good ones, two or three good ones. Three, three. Yeah. I just want to preach over here tonight. As far as the way I can get from her. I, I, I've, got a, I've got a few of those, and I'll sell you a couple, just a couple. The two of the three good ones, I'll sell you. But, but seriously, I, I've got a lot of that. But that, our assignment this afternoon, I'm going to say tonight or this morning, that's just driving me crazy, man. You, you, we got to get a building for you that you have church in the morning. Somebody say amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I'm not being silly. Lord, give them a building. In Jesus' name, let it be bigger than they can imagine. Let it be more than they can even fathom, Lord. If you agree with that, say amen. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not adverse to afternoon services, but I'm all messed up right now, man. Our assignment today is not to preach a sermon, but to to deliver a word to this house. That may be new to some of you. What do you mean a word? A prophetic word. And I'm not talking about prophetic word like Jesus is coming tomorrow because he's probably not coming tomorrow. Unless you got to meet the IRS. That's a whole different ballgame. <laughs> I just got a call from the IRS this week. Uh, we need to meet with you. What day? On the 30th, Jesus come on the 29th in your name. <laughs> but, but Seriously, seriously, I'm not talking about prophecy as it relates to end times. I'm talking about prophecy that relates to destiny and purpose. Prophecy as it relates to you individually and your walk with the Lord and your love for Jesus and your commitment to him. And I can feel it in this house. I feel real comfortable here. I feel real good here. It's like I, this is our tribe. We belong here. You, you just want to move up here? Yeah, no, the reason she says no, we got 10 grandchildren and five of them are in Tucson and she will never leave them. But, but, but I'm, I'm not just being nice, Pastor. I, I said this to your leadership and I hope I'm not offend, offending anybody when I say this. I, I don't need you to like me. I'm just too old to worry about you liking me. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Remember when you were young and you wanted everybody to love you? When, when I was a young preacher, when everybody to listen on the edge, and they fell asleep, I cast a demon out of them or put a demon in them, one or the other, whatever was necessary. But if I've gotten older, he loves me. Okay. Gosh, did you see how long that took? Man. Just a second. Would you sit in the back? Because you're a distra distraction to me. She loves me, my grandkids love me, my kids love me, and, and, and they like me. So I don't need to impress you. I just want to deliver a word. I just want to tell you what we've been hearing. 
And as I've been praying for you, I just love the Holy Spirit. I love, I, I just, I, I didn't need the email to validate what I had heard. I didn't need the text to somehow bring confirmation to what I was feeling, though I like it when God affirms. I like, how many know what I'm talking about? Like, you don't need it because you know you heard, but then when you get validation, like, I know I really heard. Like, I heard, but I, somebody say, really? really? I heard, but I Really heard, oh wow, and so it just brings that, and so it doesn't change it, it just reaffirms it, and I've been praying for you for, for a number of weeks now, and what I've been hearing, and what I've been sensing about you, and where you're headed, and what God has for you, and then I get the crazy text, or email, or whatever it was, and I thought, God, that, that's the word. Sometimes the very word you sent, it, it, not the word, but the, the, the sentence, the paragraph, in it were words I had heard. God's got plans for this house. And so this afternoon, I want to unload, we want to unload what the Holy Spirit has downloaded. And, and, and so I'm not here to preach a sermon, just to tell you what we've been hearing. And I believe this word has certainly corporate application. It has a point of corporate understanding. But I believe every word God speaks corporately to a house, and you're a part of this house, amen? Every word he speaks corporately, he wants to apply personally. That it's not just about us, it's about you. Because what he wants to do, watch this, what he wants to do in this house, he wants to begin in your house. And it's critical that you understand that and you, you recognize and embrace that. Almost like Mary, even if you don't understand it, even in your mind, well, how can that ever be? You'll be like Mary, I'll understand this, but be it unto me according to your word. I don't know how this can happen, but that's why faith is so critical in the kingdom. Because God speaks to things that look crazy, and you choose to believe, and then they come to pass. Anybody be a testimony, say amen. amen. And so when I understand the, 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 the importance of this weekend, especially as it relates to, to where you're going and the, and the joining of, of two churches. Is there anybody from Compel in this, in this building? I, I, just, I just want... Woo! Can, can, you, can you do something... If you don't feel comfortable, but those that, that are joining from Compel, I want you to stand. I'm not trying to embarrass you. Just stand. For, don't, don't, just stand. Just stand. Just stand. Just stand. Stay, stay standing. They're taking over. I'm telling you right now. Now, I, I just want to look at you and tell you that, that this is God. And I had no idea what was going on, but I felt like God was bringing a, a, a significant shift to this church to reclaim. I had no idea you existed. I mean, you know what I mean. I don't mean that. Like, <laughs> please help me, Jesus. Jan, do you want to finish this message? But, but I felt like this huge shift and this, this, this huge thing was shifting for you. And I, I felt like God was saying, I'm about to expand them. And then I get the crazy text, email, whatever, and I hear that Compel is joining hands with Reclaim. And I just need to tell you, you're not second class. You're not add-ons. Come on. You're not just, well, I guess we'll go over there. Uh-uh, uh-uh. You are family. Somebody say amen. You are family. And, and you are, if I'm embarrassing you, go, leave right now. But I'm telling you, you are significant to where this church is going. And, and watch this. I believe this. Pastor Ray, I, I, Carol, I believe this with all of my heart. This is a part of the plan for the next season you're moving into. And that God was waiting for this moment to propel and compel and reclaim what he wants to do in this community. Come on, give God a praise. I love you guys. Bless you guys. You can be seated. They, 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 didn't know, they didn't know I was going to do that, but I just feel so strong. Because I believe where you are. Say, where are we? Where are we? Joshua chapter 1. That's where you are. You're in Joshua chapter 1. And one of the most exciting books in all the Old Testament is Joshua. In fact, I like to call the book of Joshua the Acts of the Old Testament. Filled with some of the most dramatic, some of the most incredible, some of the most dramatic stories, scenes, events, and all the Bible. And by the way, it's not once upon a time far in a land. For, it's life. It's really, it's reality. It happened. Those walled cities fell. Those miracles, the sun stood still. All those miracles. 
And if I can be so bold and so prophetic to say that I believe you are on the cusp of seeing so, just, just a magnitude of the miraculous, that miracles are over this house, that miracles are waiting for their release, for the supernatural is waiting for its, its, its call and its summons to this house. And you've been in preparation and you've been faithful and I'm just kind of saying, talking as I'm hearing and you've walked things out and you've walked when you didn't want to walk and you kept going when you wanted to quit. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And God watched and you passed the test. And then this, this, this incredible church family with such incredible pastors come and heard God say the unusual in the natural, the crazy. What do you think you're doing, Ray? What do you think you're doing, Carol? We're, we're hearing and we're obeying when we don't understand. Because if you always have to understand it, then you're not walking by faith. You're walking by sight. And let me tell you the currency of the kingdom. The currency of the kingdom is faith. What moves the kingdom isn't personality and charisma and dynamic and pretty and all that kind of stuff. What moves the kingdom was God looks on a people. They are believing me. They are obeying me. They are walking this out even though they don't fully understand. Watch out, reclaim. Tell the person next to you, watch out, little Susie. That was a gospel hymn we sang years ago. So I believe there's a prophecy, and I want to unload some of those, some of those prophetic words. And I want to hasten to say that Jan and I are just the delivery team. We're not even the voice. We're the vocal cords. If this sounds arrogant of me, and especially if you don't know me, like who is this guy? I, we are not the voice. We are the vocal cords. It is his voice. I believe it is his words over this house. And we're just, we're just unloading what we've been hearing and what we've been seeing and what we've been sensing. We're just, we're just, I'm just the paper boy, the Phoenix Gazette. That's, that's all I, that's what I did when I was a young kid and, and I delivered, I delivered words and I could deliver them and I could put them right on the porch. I mean, I could write, I, I delivered papers in the day when it was, when it was real, not, not trucks and cars. Bikes and bags and baskets, and I, I would take that thing and I'd be on the street. I could fly that thing right on the porch. I could, I could go around mailboxes. I could hit the mad dog on the head. I could put it in the hands of the man standing out there. Thank you, Zane. I appreciate it. I was good. That's all I ever delivered. And then, and then, and then I went from papers to packages, and 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 I was I worked for UPS, and 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 then I realized that's my calling in life, just to deliver words. Here's the deal. I can't make you read them, and I can't make you believe them, but I'm going to put them on your porch. I'm going to lay them on your porch. And if you choose to say, I think this may be the Lord, and you can discern it, and you can judge it, doesn't frighten me, you're supposed to judge prophecy. You're supposed to see if it aligns with the word. But God speaks out of his word, but then God speaks through people to speak a word. And so I want to unload, I want to unload what the Lord has downloaded. And the, by, by the way, let me remind you, hearing is not enough. Hearing a prophecy is not enough. And, and we're good at hearing prophecies and getting all excited. I got a word from the Lord. But, but, but hearing is not enough. You need to understand that prophecy is a picture, a picture of a divine intent, a plan and a purpose that God has. It speaks to his desire for a people and for a place. And I believe there's a prophecy over this house. Before it was birthed in your heart, before this was birthed in your heart, it was birthed in the heart of God to build a place called Reclaim and to put families together. But, but, but I want to remind you, prophecy is not a guarantee. Listen to me very carefully. i got to move fast. We think if God said it, it's going to happen. I've, I've heard that. If God said it, no, no. Just because God said it does not mean it's going to happen because every par prophecy needs a partner. Prophecy is an invitation not a guarantee. He invites us to join with him in the prophecy. Embrace the process. Watch this. Embrace the process that every prophecy has. See, prophecies aren't zapped and just kind of goosebumps and warm fuzzies to get you somewhere. It's to get your attention, to hear God say, this is what I want to do. Will you join with me? Believing is not enough because faith without works is dead. I've got to believe, but then I've got to begin to activate my belief in action. Somebody say amen. Amen. I believe that's where you are. The first word I heard, it's an exciting word. It's Joshua chapter 1. You wondered if I was ever going to get there. 
I'm wondering, Jan's wondering if I'm ever going to get there. Joshua 1 speaks to where you are, Pastor. Speaks to the season you've moved into. And it's, a, it's, it's an, an exciting, exciting narrative. And it's a people on a journey. Tell the person next to you, we're on a journey. Now say back to them, we're not where, we're, where we are yet. We're not where we are yet. But we're going to get there. Amen. So we're on a journey, and that's, that's the children of Israel. They're, they're moving into a, a place they've never been. And I believe the background is they're, they're, they're at the Jordan River, and, 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 and I like to think they're at a crossroad. Life's full of crossroads. Amen? Every crossroad has a series of choices. Some crossroads are easy to navigate. Like when we have our children were living with us and we were pastoring after the Sunday service, we, we were making up our mind where we were going to go to eat. And, and there were times I gave the, the, the children the option. Where do you want to go? McDonald's, Burger King, or Taco Bell? <laughs> and, 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 and most of the time it was no big deal. Those are easy crossroads. But there are some crossroads, say some crossroads, that impact you the rest of your life. And the choice that you make there and the repercussions of that choice, whether positive or negative, can change everything about your life. Israel's at a crossroad and they have to make a very pivotal decision. Do we stay where we've been 39 plus years or do we step out of our comfort zone? Somebody knows where this sermon's going. See, the danger with reclaimed church, any church, any ministry, is to be in a season of years where all of a sudden it's getting comfortable. And it's getting, oh, I like this. And, and, you know, it's nice, especially now, no setup. Somebody say hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. And I believe God is calling you back to a high school to set up and tear down and set up and tear down. And I don't feel like I'm getting good vibes from the people right now. <laughs> right now. I'll do a Jan thing. Get away from me. I'm not just being silly. They're at a crossroads. They have to make a choice. Do we stay here? And by the way, where they've been is not been that bad. I mean, think about it. You know the story. I don't, I don't know any great detail, but where they've been is not been that bad. At night, they had this wonderful nightlight, this fire that kept them warm and kept the, kept the critters away. During the day, they had this wonderful shade. Israel, the, the land of Israel can be somewhat like Arizona in some respects in terms of desert and all that. So in the summertime, they got this wonderful canopy over them. <laughs> always had food anytime, every day, go out, get the manna. They get a little grumpy about manna. God sends a bunch of quail. God makes sure they got water. The best part is their clothes never wore out. All the men say hallelujah. <laughs> Excuse me, all the men with wives say hallelujah. <laughs> their shoes never got wore out. Oh, Jan, you don't need any more shoes. The Lord is bringing back the shoes. Well, Lord, I pray over these shoes. No, never mind. How many know that's just a wasted prayer? I'm, 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 I want you to get it. Everything's taken care of. It's comfortable. It's safe. But here's the problem. That's not their destiny. That's not where they're supposed to be. It's their, dest it's their journey, but not their destiny. It's not the place God's called them. And you're not where God's called you yet. Say, we're on the way. You are on the way. And I believe now, Joshua 1 says, you're at a crossroads. And I didn't know the timing of, of two churches coming together. I didn't know where you were. And when God dropped it in my heart, I said, God, that's a, that's a big word. You are, God is calling reclaimed church to cross over. I believe the word of the Lord. This is, say, this is, this is your crossing over season. You are moving into a new time and into a new place, a place you've never been before, a place you've never been before. And the Lord is saying to you, will you go? Let, let me just read it real quickly. Keep that, there you go, I gotta watch that clock. Uh, what time I gotta wrap up here? Six, seven, <laughs> nine, nine? Yeah, we got the rest of the night. We'll let the second service come in. I, I am so pumped, people. I'm so excited for you. I hope that, you know my hesitation, Pastor? I hope that doesn't sound like superficial hype. It's not hype. 
It's a subtle awareness that, my goodness, you're at a very significant, exciting. Yes, there'll be challenges. Yes, doesn't mean it's going to be a panacea. There's no such thing as panacea or pandemic. There's no such thing as any of that stuff. I'll tell you what, right now, you're at such a significant place. But the challenge is you need to hear this. Look at verse 1, Joshua. Now the Lord spoke to Joshua saying, Moses, my servant is dead. As I said to the leaders this morning, as I was kind of unloading just a part of this, this part of the message, I, I said, you know, I would think that, that God could have been a little bit more gentle, gentle when he said that. Because when you say somebody has died, you usually say something. <laughs> if you're George, it's not a prophecy. George has passed on. George is with the Lord now. Very rarely have you said, George is dead. Where's George? He's dead. Anybody seen George? Yeah, he's dead. Now, I'm not making fun of death. I've lost a loved one. Probably most of us have. I'm not minimizing that at all. Don't misunderstand me. But what is God doing? Can't you just say, Moses will no longer be with you. He's somewhere else now. No. God is trying to get a message, and I need you to hear the message. God is telling Joshua, and God is telling Reclaim Church, Moses is dead. That season is over. It is not coming back. So much so that, Joshua, I'm not even going to tell you where I buried him because if I do, you'll go build a monument or a memorial and you'll go there every three days to remit, re, re, reminisce about how good it was. That season's over. Somebody shout, it's over. It's been a good season, a healthy season, a wonderful season. God did good things, great things, awesome things, but there's more out ahead. And I believe God sent us here this night at this very pivotal, significant time to tell you, you are crossing into a new season. What God has done is wonderful, but don't look at there, look there ahead. I think I'll say amen all by myself. He's dead. Let it go. Lord, I just want to break off regret off somebody in this room right now. I just heard the Lord say that. You regret this and regret that. That season's over. God told, God told Samuel, how long will you grieve over Saul? That season is over. I got me a David. I got me a, I got me a shepherd king. Let it go, Samuel. That's not coming back. Good, enjoy it. Talk about it in, in, in nice tones, but don't let your heart be tied to what was yesterday because you will miss your tomorrow leaning on yesterday's situation. That's a word. Listen, that's not just a word for this house. That's a word for somebody in this room. And you're pining for yesterday and you wish you could go back there. And I wish I could go back to that church or that time or that season. Sometimes I meet these people praying for a revival and they spend more time talking about past revivals than believing God for future new revivals. Let it go and move on because you're going somewhere, Pastor. You are going somewhere. He goes on and he said, my servant Moses is dead, therefore arise. Say arise. arise. He says, get up and get moving. Cross the Jordan. The optimal word in that text is cross the Jordan. He didn't say try to cross the Jordan. He didn't say I hope you cross the Jordan. He didn't say good luck, I'll see you on the other side. He said cross it. It is a prophetic word. When Jesus gives you a word, that's what you walk on. When the storm came, they should have realized Jesus said, let us go to the other side. The very fact Jesus said, let us go to the other side, meant we're going to get there notwithstanding the storm. The storm is never the problem. It's what you focus on. And if you focus on the word, cross, you'll get there. And by the way, he gave them that word when the river was flooded. He's not like God. No, seriously, how many know what I'm talking about? Like God gives you a prophetic word or a directive, and it's the worst time in life. Like, like God told us to build. I'm talking about victory now. We, we were busting out of the, where we were in the old sanctuary. It seated about 1,000, and we were second service, third service, and God said, build, arise and build, arise and build. Church, let's arise and build, 2007. Arise and build. Yeah, Pastor, arise. How many know where I'm going? Yeah, you know exactly where I'm going. Yeah, yeah, arise and build. Okay, let's go. Let's raise the money. Let's move off in faith. Start the building. 2008 shows up. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Everything dropped. None of my people got money. I don't have money. I think God lost some money. <laughs> we laugh, but that's how God works. Because if we make, if God makes it too easy, 
If God drives all the adversaries out for you and does everything for you, the reason why God let them have some adversaries still there, not because God's a, 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 a sadist and just wants to see them squirm. He says, if I make it too easy for you, you'll treat it too cheaply. middle of 2008, I'm standing here from a steel structure. I got no money. Everything's falling apart in the economy. I'm crying my eyes out. God, you told me to build. I did. <laughs> did you have any idea what was coming? I mean, did, didn't the Holy Spirit fill you in? He, I knew everything that was coming. Then why did you tell us to build now? Because I want to show you how I can work with obedient people in the midst of the most difficult of circumstances. Stop looking for the best circumstance to move out and just move out when he says move out. I think I'm preaching good already. Yes. Craziest time in the world. Is this okay? I'm not boring you, am I? Watch this. Watch this. Cross all the people to the land. Say the land to the place, to the ministry, to the destiny I have given you. Say, it's ours. He says, I've given it to you, but you've got to possess it. You drive out the inhabitants. You do it. See, this is how the kingdom works. We can't do it without God, and he won't do it without us. That's how the kingdom works. Nothing's going to happen on this planet you know why you're so significant? You know, everything's focused about Washington. Washington is nothing compared to the church. We're all, it's all about, no, no, no. You are the most important thing on the planet. Once you are gone, it's over. The only reason there's any, any kind of sanity, listen, you got to get this. The only reason there's any kind of sanity and hope is because you're still here. When he's done with the church, when he's done doing what he wants to do with and through the church, and he takes us home, it's all over. You better believe the world ought to be happy we're still here. Somebody say amen. Because when he blows the trumpet and we go, it's all over. And so it's significant that you get and understand what, what he's saying. He says, I've given it to you, but, but I'm not going to do it without you. I'm not going to do it for you. I'm going to do it with you. Nothing on this planet happens outside the partnership of the people of God with the king of kings. So important you get that. So important. He goes on to say, every place your foot treads will be your territory. Holy Spirit, I can't do this, but can you somehow, just somehow let them get the revelation of how profoundly powerful. Well, this is Old Testament. No, this is prophetic. This is a picture of what God wants to do here through this church. Every place. Say every place. Say every place. Every place. every place, Pastor. Your foot treads can be yours. That store. That business. That school. That neighborhood. Walk around it. My, 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 my wife got, got a hold of that and she began to walk around the high school in Yosemite, high school in, in Oakhurst. They begin to walk and all of a sudden they begin to see transformations happen, the miracles happen. We, we went to a little school called Laguna and we claimed it. it was, it's in, in a Title I uh, uh, a part of town. That's where our church is. It's not the healthiest place to live. And God said, if you'll stay there, I'll use you. And we took that school and we begin to walk around and we begin to pray. We begin to ask God. And then we put feet to our, to our prayers. We put action to our faith. And we raised $120,000 and refurbished just did crazy stuff for the school. The school district was so overwhelmed. Why, why are you doing this? Because we love people. I'm telling you, you don't wait till it's all together, but every place your foot treads can be yours. This is your city. Come on. And you capture that vision, you begin to walk around it in faith. He says, just as I was with Moses, you need to hear this. Just as I was with Moses, I'm going to be with you. Only be strong and very courageous, verse 7. He says it again and again. Just, just as I was with Moses, I'll be with you. Do all that I have commanded you, for I will do great things and make your way prosperous, and you will have great, great success. If you're willing to cross over. Pastor, I don't know all that means. Sometimes, sometimes when, I'm, when I'm hearing prophetic words for people and for churches, I, I want to understand, can't, Lord, what does that mean? Let me explain it. And, and this, this is part of the, I'm not a prophet, but this is one of the, one of the frustrations of that, that gifting is the Lord will say, don't worry what it means, just say it. You know, preachers want to figure it all out and explain, oh, this is what it means. I don't know what it means. I just know you are crossing over. I just know you are at the, you're at the crossroads of a river. 
pa- Pastor Ray and Pastor Carol, you made a decision. You're crazy. What are you thinking? Some of your people right now in the room are going, yeah, what are you thinking? But they trust you. So please say amen. Okay. Just, I was hoping they're with you. Glory. And in the natural, I'm sure there were even people, you and I all know, district people, other pastors, what did you hear what Ray and Carol are doing? They're joining. What, what are they thinking? What are they doing? What they're doing is what they felt they heard. Join hands with this other church. And they're obeying. It's awesome. They're obeying. And they're taking that crazy step of faith in the natural. And I'm telling you, God's going to make your way and their way prosperous because you're doing what you feel the Lord has told you. Is that your son? Oh, he's just sweet, man. <laughs> You're just awesome, dude. He's just leaning at his mama, just looking up there like that. I just, I, what's your name? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Mess me up now. There's prophecy all over you, buddy, singing and battling. I'm telling you, you'll be a forerunner right now. Somebody say amen. amen. You're going to be out front tearing some people down. <laughs> and, and you as a church are embracing something you've never done before. But if we always know what we're doing, then we don't understand how the kingdom works. Sometimes you got to step in the river when it's flooding and say, God, is this really you? I can see Joshua. I'm taking too long, Pastor. I can see Joshua. The river's flooded. He's the new leader. Moses is gone. He's not coming back. Now he's got to lead these people. He's been three days at Shidem, and then God says, arise and cross. And he's thinking, God, I don't want to tell you your stuff. I mean, you're, you're omniscient and all-knowing. But have you noticed the river? You know, God, I, I, we've been around here for about 40 years now, and we kind of know the season. If we wait about a month and a half, maybe less, the river will recede. And if you know the Jordan, it's almost just some places, it's just like a canal. You just kind of walk across. We think this huge river. Some places, I've been there. And, and so, God, can I just, just share with you, it would be a lot better if we went later. Nope, go now. Okay. Can I ask one other favor? Could you kind of do it like my boss, Moses? Hey, where's that staff of Moses? Somebody find me the staff. I need the staff. Huh? What? I told you to guard that with your life. Kill him right now. I'm telling you he's done. Now we're laughing. But don't make the mistake that Joshua didn't feel some of that. He's as human as you and I. You better believe. He's thinking, oh, man, I'm going to tell the leaders to get in a flooded river and, they're, and tell them stand there until the water parts. And they're looking at me like, and they've got the ark on their shoulders, the cherished, cherished picture of God's presence. God, is there another way? No, only way. But if you'll obey, I'll part that water. I'll part the water. Somebody say amen. The next word. Can I hurry up? I got about three minutes. Well, I got to come back, man. It's like I told the leaders, I always got to come back. That's how I come back. I got 18 more sermons. I heard the Lord say it's harvest time. Yeah, that's right. I like that. I, I did. I heard the Lord say out of nowhere, I just heard harvest time. And I just thought, that's oh, harvest time. No, no. Reclaim harvest time. I want you to tell Reclaim Church it's harvest time. Not that you haven't had harvest, but you are moving in a level of harvest that is going to be exponential. It's going to be incredible. I, I'm telling you what I heard. You can discern it. You can get strategy. You can figure out what that means, and God will give you the messages how to preach on it. But I heard the Lord say this. The, the field is ripe and ready for picking. It's ripe and ready. And you, and you know the passage. Don't say there are four months and yet the harvest. Even now they are white. They are ready. And I feel like, I feel like, Pastor, that though you've had harvest, primarily you've been planting and sowing and watering and planting and sowing and watering. And I feel like God has watched your faithfulness. And I'm going to tell you what I heard. Can I just say what I heard? I believe it's going to be an easy harvest. An easy harvest. It doesn't mean there will be challenges. That's adversarial. But it's going to be an easy harvest. And I believe the Lord said to me, you are going to have a bumper crop. 
you better reserve your seat now. You better figure out what seat is yours and claim it. Put your name on it because there are going to be some harvested people walk in this building and they won't know the protocols and they won't know all the lingo and they won't know you're supposed to do this, that, and the other and they'll sit in your seat. <laughs> and they'll come up and they'll go, excuse me, that's my seat. I don't see your name on it. Well, get up. See, it fits perfect. These fit right there. It's been there for 57 years. Harvest is coming to this house. It's a word over this house. And the Lord says it's going to be an easy harvest. And the Lord told me to tell you, he is releasing to another level the spirit of evangelism in this house. And we just lost Reinhardt Bonke. And we just lost our, our they, they just graduated. We didn't lose anybody. They graduated. Billy Graham graduated. Probably the greatest evangelism of our, evangelism of our time. And God told me, Pastor, Pastor John, God said, I'm not going to have any more one-man shows. And I don't mean that in a derogatory way. God, that was a season. God said, now I'm going to use the mantle of Billy Graham on churches, on people. And I'm going to release such evangelism, fervor, and passion. In fact, I heard these words, marketplace missionaries. And I, I've done missions overseas, and we need that. But I believe some of the greatest hardest harvest field is not just across the seas, it is across the street. And God said, I, I, I believe the, the marketplace is the next great mission field. God said, I have much people in the city. In fact, the Lord told me to tell you, out of the seat and into the street. Out of the seat and into the street. I, I love what, um, I, I got to find this quote. I love what uh, Jerry Cook, that's a name probably hardly anybody knows. But at one time, he had one of the largest churches in Portland. And, yeah, yeah. And I just, I, I, I got to uh, speak. I, I was in one of the plenary sessions or conferences. He was the morning speaker and I was the evening. He, he said this. You may remember this quote. I, he, he, you know, here it is, here it is. Jerry, Jerry Cook says, the church is not a holding tank for heaven. Can, can I say something that will shock some of you? Maybe. Heaven's, heaven's not my destiny. Oh, yeah, yeah, it is. No, it's not. Heaven's my destination. Heaven's where I'm ending up. I got my ticket. I'm not worried about getting there. I'm worried about fulfilling my destiny. My destiny is here. My destination's there. And the destiny God has for us is salt and light. Go ye therefore. Harvest, harvest, harvest. He, I, I, I wish that none would perish, so I'm going to linger my coming that more might come in. He says, Jerry Cook says, the church isn't a holding tank for heaven. The church is about believers going forth, spreading the good news, and advancing the kingdom. The goal of the church is not simply to meet, but rather to be equipped and edified and developed to go. Go out to meet, but go out and be salt and light. Indeed, the church happens best out there, out in the marketplace so the world can see and touch and experience the love of God. And I believe you are moving into a season of just incredible harvesting. So many are fearful of evangelism. Like we're having an evangelistic outreach. Oh, man, I don't know the Bible very well. You don't need to know the Bible. It's good. But you know what I've discovered about, about the the pre, I don't like to call them lost. The pre-believer. I, I do. I think lost is kind of a little harsh. You're lost. What do you mean I'm lost? I know where I'm at. I'm in Peoria, Arizona. <laughs> you're the one that's lost. If you think I'm lost, you're lost. They're pre-believers. They've just not yet seen him. Because once you see him, once you taste his love and grace, that's... That, once, once the eyes are open, once you, once you experience his love, like, like who wouldn't follow Jesus? Somebody say man. But how will they know unless somebody goes? And how will they go unless somebody sent them? And I, I, I believe that that's what God, God is doing. I got to hurry. God is doing in this hour. I, 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 believe, I believe he's saying, just tell your story. They're not interested in theology. Could you explain the incarnation? I don't know Jesus, but I want to know about that incarnation thing. They don't, they don't even know what incarnation is. They think it's milk years ago. <laughs> Somebody know what I'm talking about. I have some friends in this house. You won't have any idea what I'm talking about, do you? He certainly doesn't have any idea what I'm talking about. I want to embarrass you. God has great plans for you. And God has his hand on your life. 
and some of the things that you're going and navigating and all that kind of stuff, he's not sweating it because he knows what he's got in your heart. He knows what he's got in your heart. And I'm not sweating it because I'm telling you, he knows the plans he has for you. And I know I'm not embarrassing you. I'm not telling you something that you don't know deep in your heart. I'm going to tell you something. While you were swimming around in mama's womb, God says, I put this quality in this character. And that's why sometimes there's been battles. There's been battles because the enemy knows who you really are. I'm, I apologize to take the time to this, but I really don't because there's greatness all over you. There's greatness all over you. So just tell your story. I once was dead and now I'm alive. I was blind and now I see. It's like that man in the Bible, greatest testimony in the Bible. The power of your testimony is more powerful at the front end than theology because they don't understand theology and they don't even know theology. But when you tell them what Jesus did for you, we were on the brink. My life was a hellhole. You should have seen the, 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 the world I was living in. It's like that man in the Bible got healed of blindness. And all the theologians and all the Pharisees, who did this to you? And why did they do this? And how did this happen? And, 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 and was this your mother's fault, your father's fault? And he finds it, ah, shut up. It's not, a, it's not an evangelistic tool, but, you know, it'll work. <laughs> shut up. Why? I don't know how to answer your questions. All I know is I was blind. Now I see. And that right there named Jesus touched me. That's all I know. Just tell your story. Tell the neighbor. Tell him what God did for you. Tell him how he changed your life. And you got to step out of your comfort zone. You got to be willing to risk some things. But what if they yell at me? What if they say, get out of my face? Nine times out of ten, they won't. Just, can I pray for you? Shake off the fear. It's like the little lady. It's like, the, just come to the keys. I got, I got, I got a whole other service. I'll do the second half service. It's, it's like, it's like the little lady, and, and and God was dealing with her about about moving out of her comfort zone and, and being willing to risk sharing her faith or even going up to somebody and say, can I pray with you? And Oh, but God, what if they freak out? What if they kind of fire down from heaven and all that craziness that we think? And she's in, a, she's in like a Walmart and, and, and they have a pharmacy and she's going around looking, looking for stuff and, 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 and she passes this little, little lady, little, little old lady, little older lady and, and she looks up and she, hears, she feels that, that Pillsbury nudge. How many know what I mean? That little holster Holy Spirit, and I says, ask if you can pray with her. He, she could tell that she was a little distraught. She won't know. I can't pray. I no way. And you know how when you're when you hear the Lord and you're afraid, but you want to just you just don't want to just rebel and you just circle by Him again. <laughs> and you you just want to see if you get the same feeling. Like maybe that was just me. Oh no, I felt it again. And she, you know what I mean, don't you? She, about six or seven trips by, and finally she just, oh, God, I'm miserable. I just got to do this. And she just stops. She says, ma'am, ma'am, since you're a little older, ma'am, she says, she says, am I in trouble? Yes. I love you, sweetheart. You're awesome. I picked you because nobody else in this congregation is worthy to be picked. I'm telling you right now. So, 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 so she says, ma'am, I, I apologize I, I, if I'm coming on to, but, and she kind of stumbled around. She says, I just, can I pray with you? Do you have a need? And the lady looked up at her. Just, she begins to tear up. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for my prescription. I, I'm struggling in my body. I haven't slept for, for weeks and weeks. I can't sleep all night long. We don't know what the problem is. And, and, and yeah, would you pray for me? And she just prayed a simple prayer. Not, you know, don't pray. Don't pray like this in, 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 in a super. Lord Jesus, <laughs> heal this one right now. In the name of Jesus, yes, be healed. Be healed. <laughs> be healed. Stand up. Bend over. Bend over right now. No, 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 Jesus. <laughs> That's all I need you to hurt your back, and I'll never come in back. Oh! Then you're going to have to heal him. And, 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 and so she started to go away. She prayed just a simple prayer. Just, Jesus, touch, touch this precious woman and minister to her. And whatever the problem, I just believe. This, you believe he heals? Okay, I just believe you heal today. And so touch her body. Didn't do anything dramatic and start to walk away. Another little Pillsbury moment. Give her your phone number. No, I've done enough. I'm not giving her my phone number. 
And she just, here, here's my phone number if, if you ever need something. Didn't even tell her about Jesus yet. Sometimes you got to gain their trust before you lay the gospel on them. That bothers some of you because you just want to go right for the scalp. Sometimes you need to open the door with a good deed, a good love, a good expression of prayer. And so she left. Next morning, about 6.30, the phone rings in her house. And it wasn't those days when you had the caller ID that could tell you, you don't need to answer this one. You know what I mean? In those days when the phone rang, you picked it up because who knows, could be the president, who knows. And so she did. She picked it up. Her husband's already gone to work. He's early. And she picked up, hello, can I help you? Is this, is this Margaret? And she had put her name on, uh, oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is Margaret. What did you do to my wife? Oh, my God. She died. (laughs) The lady died. I prayed with her and she died. Sir, what do you mean? My wife. She said that you you prayed for her in in, in the pharmacy yesterday. Yes, sir. Is there a problem? Yes, there's a problem. A big problem. I didn't sleep all night long. Why, sir? Because she slept all night long. I didn't get a wink of of sleep wondering what's wrong because she never slept for six weeks all night long. What did you do to her? Well, sir, let let me tell you what I did. I just just asked Jesus to touch her. Can we get together? Boom. The door's open. Just tell your story. Just invite them to church. Just do something good. I'm here in this church because a young man named Danny Sanders who was at my paper station in, in Glendale and Glendale, Arizona at, at Myrtle, Myrtle and 57th Avenue. We had a Joe's supermarket. That's where we picked up our papers for the day. And my, my bike broke and my dad was an alcoholic. My mom had died and uh, my brother was into drugs and it was a mess of a home. And nobody could fix my bike, so I had to walk my papers, put the bag over me, you know what I'm talking about, and walk my route. 700 papers a day. Okay, it wasn't 700. (laughs) It was close to 650. One day, Danny, who I didn't like, just didn't like him. You know, some people, he's, I don't like you. We're so stupid, aren't we? They didn't do anything. I don't know, I just don't like you. And Danny was a believer, went to the Glendale Church of God, Don Price, before it was the church in the city at the time. It's just a little tiny church on the backside of, of, of near the ice plant in Glendale, across the stra- tracks. And they said, I'll help you. No, I don't need no help. No, I'll help you. Come on. I'll deliver your route for you. We'll do it together. Before I could ever get my bike fixed, because my dad was always drunk at night, he did my papers for me. It was Sunday the one he did. The, it was the big one. The big one. I said, why are you doing this? No, no reason. It just melted my heart. And then one day he said, hey, would you come to church with me? Like, can I say no? <laughs> like, I delivered your papers, dude. Yeah, I'll come. On a Wednesday night in a little church that sat no more, not even this side. And four Hispanic brothers from Teen Challenge just happened to be te- ministering that night. And on the fourth row, one, two, three, four, second person in, Danny, me, David, Wyatt. Three brothers and a guy in the middle that didn't know anything about Jesus lifted his hands when one of the Hispanic brothers says, somebody needs to give their heart to Jesus. And I lifted my hand and I went, what, that? And what up with you? What? And I just, and I walked to an altar, knelt down and gave my heart to Jesus for one reason. Danny opened my heart with a good deed. Come on. It's coming to your house. Evangelism's coming to your house. It's going to be messy. i got to wrap this up. It's going to be messy. Get ready. I think you're okay with messy. I'm looking around, and I'm seeing a lot of messy people in this house. And I think you're cool with messy. But you better be, because they're going to walk in, 
and they're going to give their heart to Jesus. Either you've led them to the Lord or you've brought them to an altar to find Jesus. And I'm going to tell you something. They're going to be messy and they're not going to be all cleaned up. Because sometimes they got to belong before they believe. Sometimes they got to fit in. Sometimes you, gotta, you, you can't make them fit in to get in. Lazarus, come forth. Deader than dead. You know the story. And he came forth, wrapped in grave. <laughs> Mouth wrapped. <laughs> you thought he was speaking in tongues. <laughs> no, he was saying, Will somebody help me? New life, resurrection life. No longer dead, but wrapped up in grave clothes and issues and habits and problems and struggles and weaknesses and, 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 and on and on I could go. But born again, but still got stuff. And what did Jesus say? I can't believe this. Get out of here, Lazarus. No, he said, you loose him and let him go. You get your hands on those dirty, stinky grave clothes. You reach out and help him with his issues and help him with his weaknesses. You walk with him. Come on, somebody say amen. That's what's coming. That's what's coming to the house. And it could be the next Billy Graham or the next whatever great man or woman of God. And they'll walk in. Who, who, who's the Apple guy? Not Bill Gates. Steve Jobs came into one, I heard this story, I haven't validated it, verified it, but I believe the guy who told me is true, came into one of our Assembly of God churches as a young man full of questions. Sometimes us religious believers get so offended by questions that we push people away or they don't know our lingo. He came in, they said, he told me, he came to one of our Assembly of God churches, was there as a young man for a while, but nobody would answer his questions. They all just thought, well, you just need to, and he walked away. Can you imagine if somebody would have taken time to love that guy, disciple that guy? You talk about evangelism. You talk about a guy that could fund the ministries around the world. Every one of you right now, almost every one of you have his thing. It's called an iPhone. Right? Why? Because you understood there's evangelism coming to this house. And I believe, I believe this church is ripe for it, Pastor. Are you ready? Are you ready to cross over? Are you ready to cross over? Now, 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 you sound, you sound like my church. Yeah! Until we get in the water. Yeah! Whoa, whoa. You know, when Moses was the leader, you're lucky you have nobody ahead of you. When Brother Jones was the pastor, we didn't have to go through this stuff. None of this stuff happened, but, but now with Pastor Zane, and you just stand there. I don't know when this water's going to end, but I trust God, and I trust the leader, and I believe we're supposed to cross over. I'm going to have Jan come in just a moment, but I want you to bow your heads just with me with, with just a moment. I, I can't help. I can't help but feel. I can't help but feel there's some people in this room and been hearing me just kind of be crazy something's been tugging your heart and I think there's a prodigal in this room and I think there's someone that's just kind of been wandering around but somehow you came in here tonight and you say yeah I, I need to surrender to Jesus and I'm not going to embarrass you but I just want you to lift your hand and your head and let our eyes meet because I want to I want to agree this is the day of new beginnings for you are you here tonight just just lift it just, just lift your hand and go that's me yeah, I see you. I see you. Thank you, man. I, I see you right there. I see you right there. Th this is the day of new beginnings for me. Anybody else? I'm going to surrender. Yeah, I see it. 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 I've been praying for you. I'm talking to you now. Pray for you all afternoon long. This is a day of new beginnings. This is a day where God's saying, no. I haven't changed my mind or my purpose on you. My hand is on your life. My hand is on your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, I just want to agree with these two young men and this gentleman that lifted their hand. And I want to say tonight is a night of new beginnings for you. That as you simply say, Lord, I'm going to surrender to you. 
you don't have to get the grave clothes off. We're gonna help you get there. We're gonna walk with you through your stuff and we're gonna be patient with you through your, through your stumbles and we're gonna say, no, no, it's cool, but I messed up. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you're a part of the family now. Lord, I just ask that you would let them right now with their own words just simply surrender to you. I could give you a prayer, but you know the words you need to say to Jesus right now. Just say them. Father, forgive me. Father, I surrender. Father, I give you my life. I give you my heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. I bless your name. Come up here, Jan. You got a mic there. Is it on? Right here. Hallelujah. Would you just stand with us? We're just going to close out these few moments with a word of prayer because what you've been hearing this afternoon, what we believe is some prophetic words to this house. But this house isn't the four walls of this church. This house is you, each one of you. So what God has been speaking this afternoon, he's speaking to you personally. And you know what? We can say yes as my husband said, be it unto me according to your word. But we also need the empowerment of the Holy Spirit because what happened to Mary, right? It said that the Holy Spirit shall come upon you and overshadow you. And so if you will just agree with me and let my words be your words in agreement that we're saying yes, Lord to all that you have spoken. So will you just um, bow your hearts with me? Father, we come to you this afternoon. And Lord, we say that we partner with your words to us. Lord, we say yes to all that you have spoken. Lord, we as your people say that we are moving through and crossing through what you have called us to, Lord. Lord, we are leaning forward, we are leaning into, and faith is rising in our lives. Lord, we agree and we say, God, that there is a possessing anointing of your spirit upon us, and we will possess everything that you have spoken to us this day. Lord, it is not by might and it is not by power, but it is by your spirit that we depend on and we lean into. And Father, we say yes to the harvest. That harvest will increase. Lord, we say the evangelical mantle is upon us. In fact, um, could you just pick up a card or those cards that was on your seat that pastor talked about? Lord, we hold these cards symbolically in our hands And we say, send us, Holy Spirit. We say, drop in our heart who we will invite, who we will hand this to, God. Maybe it's that waiter or that waitress. Maybe it's that person next door in the neighborhood. Lord, maybe it's that worker at work or at school, Lord. Maybe it's even just walking through the store and you direct us as you did that precious woman in Walmart. So, God, we say we make ourselves available to you and there is an evangelical mantle that is coming upon us as your sons and daughters and Lord we say send me can you just say that send me say it again send me so Lord open our eyes to see that you have chosen each one of us for this time for this hour in this season And to the chaos in the world, Lord, each one of these is the answer. So, Lord, may each one be empowered by your strength and by your grace. And, Lord, we say it is all for you. Amen? Amen. It is all for you in your powerful name. Hallelujah. We agree.